What we're talking about here is the Food Supplement Directive, which defines clearly what foodstuffs are sold in Ireland uh, that are regulated by the Food Safety Authority and which tens of thousands of people consume weekly. And they're defined in the EU Directive as foodstuffs that are meant to supplement the normal diet and which are concentrated sources of nutrients or other substances with a nutritional or physiological effect alone or in combination marketed in those form. And if we look at what's happened in England, in 2016, uh, the actual amount of food supplements sold in the UK was almost 700 million euros. And they reckon that one in every three people in the UK actually take a, soup, a food supplement weekly. In Ireland, this worth about, I'm told, and the Minister can correct me on this, about 60 million a year. And just tens of thousands of people uh, take them. And many people have come to my office recently. In many cases, they're older people, they're people on pensions, they're people who are in reasonably good health, but are worried, and clearly they believe, and in many cases, doctors uh, or their chemists will say that uh, additives such as glucose for joint health, probiotics to help with their digestive system, fish oil for heart health and so on, are useful and beneficial. And they feel that the fact that it is proposed by revenue that you would increase taxes on all of these products immediately from the 1st of March by 23% is an imposition which they find uh, unacceptable in terms of their income and of their needs and of their health needs. And when you have people coming into you who are, who, who, you know, who, who are elderly, who have a limited income, and are very concerned and worried that they won't be able to take the supplement that they have had maybe for the last 10, 15 or 20 years, that is at the core of the problem. And if the tax take, which is proposed, and I don't have the figures, but I'm told it could be around 8 million per annum, if that's what the taxpayer will get out of this. I think that this commotion, particularly to elderly people, to women who are pregnant, and to, I suppose, parents with young children, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not really good enough for them. Now, regardless of what you think, and I've read the Food Safety Authority advice on vitamins and supplements, and it's very clear that, that you know, what they say, and I don't second-guess them in their medical advice, but nevertheless, it is hugely important that it would continue. Um, I've also been advised that if Brexit comes, if there is a hard Brexit, that these products will actually increase in cost and that would be more difficult uh, to get. And that will drive more and more people onto the online business and people buying online, such as from islands like Guernsey in the Channel Islands, will be buying products which are unregulated, of unknown composition, of unknown health uh, defects or affects, uh, and, and there is no ethical uh, there's no ethics involved in the sale online of these products, where in the shop in Ireland, which employs over 1,800 people nationally, there, there is a court of ethics, and it is entirely acceptable that someone will go from their doctor to their health food shop to get the nutrient that will be of benefit to them. And it's entirely unacceptable that we drive them uh, into an unregulated market buying products that they don't know what they're actually consuming. So I feel, Minister, what's important here is that what the Minister for Finance is intending to do is to consult with the business and other interest groups and health bodies uh, and to report back to the DAW. So perhaps, Minister, you can, in the second half, I can the respond to what you say. Minutes. Thank you, Lance Count Corla. And please take the opportunity on behalf of the Minister for Finance speak on the issue of the VAT treatment of food supplements. The standard rate of VAT applies to food supplements. However, there is a revenue concession which allows the zero rate to be applied to certain types of food supplements such as vitamins, minerals and fish oils. The practice of zero rating vitamins, minerals and fish oil food supplements has been applied since the introduction of VAT in November 1972. When the marketplace for food supplements was small, and the concession meant that vitamins, minerals and fish supplements were treated the same as food for VAT purposes. <clears throat> Since the 1970s, there has been a significant growth in the number and complexity of food supplement products on the market, most of which are not covered by the zero-rate concession. 
such as supplements containing botanicals and bioactive substances. While these new products apply at the standard rate of VAT, the growing variety of products in the market led to diverging views between revenue and the industry over which food supplement should be at the zero rate versus the 23% rate. Revenue issued e-briefs in 2011 and in 2013 in an effort to clarify that only basic vitamins, minerals and fish oil would qualify for the zero rate, but disagreement on the applicable VAT rate and queries on specific products continued. The operation of the current concession has become problematic due to efforts by some businesses in the industry to exploit the concession to extend the zero rating beyond the scope permitted by revenue. These businesses have challenged revenue guidance and revenue decisions on the VAT rating of products giving rise to concerns about compliance within the industry and on un unfair competition between compliant and non-compliant businesses. The issue was raised during the debates on last year's finance bill. Deputies and senators looked for clarity for industry on the VAT treatment of food supplements and sought for the retention of the zero rate for certain categories of food supplements. The Committee States Minister agreed that he would ask his officials to address the matter in the context of the next tax strategy group and also stated that he would not interfere in any decision made by revenue on the matter in the interim. Revenue published new guidance on the 27th of December concerning the rate of VAT that applies to food supplements announcing their intention to apply the 23% VAT rate to most food supplements with effect from the 1st of March of this year. It should be noted that, however, human oral medicines including certain folic acid and other vitamin and mineral product, products licensed by the Health Products Regulation, Regulatory Association will continue to apply at the zero rate of VAT. It is possible to retain these products at the zero rate because they qualify as oral medicines which are charged at VAT to charge to VAT at the zero rate in Ireland under an historical derogation to EU VAT law. In addition, infant food and, and food products such as yogurts that contain, contain probiotic ingredients will also continue to be zero rated. I understand the concerns of industry in relation to the matter. That is why, independent of revenue decisions, on interpretation, the Minister agreed to put in place a process that will conclude in the 2019 Tax Strategy Group paper to examine some of the policy choices around the VAT treatment of food supplements. Thank you, uh, I'd like to welcome what the Minister says and concentrate on his last paragraph, that the Minister does understand the concern of the industry in relation to this matter and also the concern of the public and people who consume uh, these products weekly and daily. And I welcome the fact that he has agreed to put in place a process that would conclude in the 2019 tax strategy group paper to examine some of the policy choices around the VAT treatment of food supplements. So the question is, Minister, will he consider uh, and has he got the intention, therefore, that to, to delay the introduction of VAT from the 1st of March, uh, unless obviously the tax strategy group reports in the interim. I think it's very important that, uh, that he would re reconsider a decision to, to commence this increase in food, in food additives uh, from the 1st of March, because it will really genuinely, truthfully and honestly uh, look at the people that come into your office and into mine and tell them, no, you're going to have to pay that. And yet they say, well, my health is, is bad, I have a problem with arthritis, I have a problem, whatever it might be. And it, it, makes, it means an awful lot to people that, they, that their disposable income, uh, particularly pensioners, wouldn't have to pay the, the additional increase in VAT. And I would say that the experience in other countries, in the United Kingdom, and the question of unregulated access to the internet, to products which are not defined, we don't know what's in them, they could very well harm the individuals concerned, or certainly won't do them any good. And obviously, it's not what we want to see happening. And I would urge, Minister, that you would take on board the views of the people that talk to you and to myself, and that the tax strategy group paper should be published, and the Minister decide on how he intends to act before he would introduce this uh, high VAT rate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy. Um, the Minister's intention at the time of the 
last budget was that he would not interfere in relation to the matter with the Revenue Commissioners. The Deputy is aware the Revenue Commissioners operate independently of the Department of Finance. But what I will do, Deputy, is I will relay your concern in relation to the matter to the Minister uh, when I'm meeting him tomorrow. Um, one of the things that I want to be very clear upon, and I've met representatives from the, from the health food sector, is that I know that Minister Donoghue and I know myself will give the sector a very fair hearing. But there is a challenge, and some of the challenge is that there are now thousands of these food supplement products um, now on the market. And the issue here is some of them are the correct rate of that is 23%. That is the correct rate. But there is a challenge that the rate is at, should be at zero. And that is not helpful in the current circumstances that we're finding ourselves in. There, there are the products that are at zero um, currently, as the e-note from Revenue said, in 2011 and 2013, will remain at zero percent. But some of them are VAT chargeable because of European VAT law. That is, a, that is just a fact. But the continuing continual challenge of all the products being at zero rate is not helpful. I will raise the matter with Minister Dunham tomorrow when I speak with him. Uh, it is a concern. Uh, Minister Dunham gave an undertaking that Tax Strategy Group would consider the matter. Uh, and they will, and they will get a fair hearing from Minister Dunham and from myself.